Hi, this is Mia from Freedom Marine in beautiful Vancouver, British Columbia. And welcome back to another one of our how-to series on Axopar. I am standing on board an Axopar 28 cabin and we will be inviting Alex from Revolution Yacht Experience to do an overall handover video on this boat. He will cover up most of the systems and everything else you would need to know as if you've just purchased the vessel. So if you own an Axopar 28 and you may have forgotten some of the things on the boat, this would be a great video for you to watch. So come on on board and remember to subscribe and follow our channel for more videos on Axopar. Thank you for that introduction, Mia. Yes, my name is Alex with Revolution Yacht Experience and beautiful British Columbia indeed. We have some beautiful fall weather today in which we're going to do this 28 Axopar handover slash orientation video. As Mia mentioned, this will be a, a full vessel walkthrough. So we're going to go from bow to stern and we're going to go through each and every item on the boat and familiarize yourself with it as if you just purchased this Axopar. This can also be used as a pre-purchase homework type video. If you are thinking about buying an Axopar, this will be also an awesome video for you to watch. We have already done one on the 37 Axopar and we'll leave a link to that video uh, in the description down below. But without further ado, let's get into this video and we'll start with the anchoring system. So, as you can see, there is a piece of canvas out in front of me. This covers all the cushions in this area. So through the magic of film, we're just going to remove this off camera and then we're going to come back with it um, removed and then we're going to put it back on and show you how the canvas goes on later. So, back in just a second. So, canvas is now removed and I'm up here on the bow and I'm going to talk about the anchor and the roller and how it is uh, safely connected to the vessel and the steps which you'll need to take in order to free up the anchor to drop it overboard and safely anchor your boat. So right here we have this device here which is called the anti-rattle device. There is another full video on anchoring if you guys want to watch that where I go into a little bit more detail but uh, this is the anti-rattle device and you just unscrew each of these just a little bit just enough to unclip it. It is captive so it will stay there so just leave that off to the side and then once you open this bow locker right here you'll see that there's this safety lanyard as well also attached to the chain. So at that point we can just disconnect that and we can reattach it down in here. No problem. Okay so without power on we can't really go any further than this. So I'm going to jump inside the cabin really quickly, turn the power on for this system and we'll show you that in just a minute and then I'll come back out here and we'll continue the anchoring operation. Back in just a moment. Okay, so here we are with all the battery switches, which is underneath the captain's seat here in the main cabin. As you can see, there's one labeled bow, which is for the bow thruster battery and also the windlass battery. Uh, it's one battery for those two devices and it is stored up in the bow. So nice and handy there, easy to remember. And we'll put the service bank on as well. And typically when I'm in here, I do put all the batteries on, but these two here are really all you need uh, to operate the, uh, the windlass. So we'll head back out onto the bow and uh, we'll continue the orientation portion on the windlass. Okay, so now we're back from turning all the appropriate power on. We're back up here to continue our anchoring operation. So of course there's other things to consider when you're anchoring. So the safety at sea type, uh, type scenarios that you need to be mindful of and be uh, aware of the surroundings and all that kind of good stuff. But right now we're just going to focus on the equipment. There are more courses and more literature that you can read on how to safely anchor your vessel and the conditions in which you should do it. But right now we're just going to focus on how to operate the actual equipment. Okay. So you'll notice right inside here there is this quick panel, Quick being the brand of windlass. It's a quick branded windlass. There's a little uh, light here and you press and you hold it and it'll make this beeping noise. It'll flash for a bit and then beep. And then once it's solid orange light, we'll splice in some other footage there so you guys can see what I'm talking about. There's a green down button and a red up button. To release the windlass down, you simply just press and hold the green button and it will just, and it will just release into the water. And then you do the same to bring it back up again, press and hold the up button. That's how you bring it back up. Notice though, down if you are bringing it up and over, uh, really try to keep an eye on it because once you hit that waterline level you want to just bring it up in little spurts so you don't come in full speed and potentially do some, um, some damage to your anchor roller. So we're just going to press and hold a little bit, a little bit, about as fast as you want to go uh, back into the roller there. 
Now there's a free, fall, a free fall mode on this windlass as well, and that's controlled by this little switch just in here. So what we'll do is we'll switch things around. I'll bring you guys here on the other side of me and you can look over my shoulder and we can look at the windlass itself. And I'll show you how the free fall mode works. So as promised, we're gonna have a little bit more of an intimate look at this windlass. And we're gonna have a look at how the, um, how the free fall mode works. And I'll tell you how to put it in and out of that mode. As you'll notice, I'll be talking. Um, you will hear a lot of background noise from the construction across the street. I do apologize for that. Um, unfortunately, this outdoor filming comes with its challenges and we can't control this uh, construction happening across the street. So apologies for that, but uh, bear with us as we make our way through here. Another sound that you're hearing in the background is actually coming from this panel here as well. And it's a beeping every now and then just to remind us that it's on. So if you're hearing that, that means that this system is charged up and ready to go. If we were to turn that off, uh, and I'll show you that in a second, then the beeping will go away. Okay, why do I have a pencil in my hand? Well, I'll show you because this is actually a pretty handy tool uh, to put this thing in and out of free fall mode. There's a little button here. Let's take a look at it right now. Okay, so there's a little bit of slack. As you can see, it's just rolling over just by a little bit because it brought the gypsy wheel, which is uh, this section here. So here's basically the chain wheel. And this is a clutch pack essentially, which is tied into the gypsy and the motor. The free fall mode essentially lets this wheel spin without being connected to this motor anymore. So we'll have a look what that looks like right now. So by pulling this little guy out here, you'll see that this pops up and that releases the connection between those two. So when we hit the down button, the gypsy wheel will release and the chain and chain wheel will spin freely. Okay, so that has now hit the bottom and that is a fast way to get your anchor down. However, it is important to note that when it's in this mode, there you go. It will eventually grab again if you just hold the up button. So you'll see that, let's look at that again. Okay. So there it goes. So when we come up, we'll see that the, uh, the outside spins and the gypsy wheel stays, um, stays put, but as they move together, there's, there's like a connection point inside. See that? You see how it moved in close? That was it grabbing it again. However, we are still in the free fall mode. If you have a look at this button right here, it's still um, popped out. When it's popped out, it'll just continue to go free fall down and then you press and hold to bring it back up again. So the reason I have this pencil is because to take it out of free fall mode, we need to push it down inside the hole and then push that in until it grabs it. And once it's grabbed, you see how far down it needs to be? Yeah, it needs to be that. That's why I have this tool to push it because you can't do it with your bare finger. So once it's in there, this pin should lock and now normal up and down, check it out. Up, down, up. And normal operation has returned. Okay, so give me just a moment. I'll pull this uh, chain all the way back in and we'll secure it back. Okay. So now everything's back uh, up here where it was and I'm going to re-secure it. So after every anchoring event, you need to definitely put the safety equipment back where it was. So let's just do that real quick. Okay, so this one back over here, no problem there. And then the anti-rattle device, it only spins one way correctly and then a little bit of this one, a little bit of this one, a little bit of this one. Work yourself backwards and forwards until they're both, both nice and tight. And then you can feel that this is uh, in a uh, nice secure spot. So we've got two layers of security should this thing ever randomly release. Okay, and this back into non-free fall mode. Okay. And then we can turn this off right here. So that'll stop beeping at us. Okay, so now the anchoring event is over. I'll take a moment to talk about this little chart right here. Not every boat's gonna have this, but if you buy one through Freedom Marine uh, with Revolution commissioning it, we typically put these uh, little anchoring uh, legends on here. So each one of these colors represents a zap strap. And uh, for those of you watching closely uh, in the previous uh, video footage that we just shot, you may have seen some zap straps uh, that were actually tied to the, uh, the anchor chain. So every 25 feet, there will be a color. So one red zap strap would be 25 feet, for example. Two yellow zap straps would be 175. So that's what this is for. And there's another one inside as well. Okay, so we'll close this one up and then we'll keep moving through the boat. 
as promised, we're starting at the pointy end and we're working our way back. The next uh, item of note back is these nav lights right here. So port side and starboard side. So when you turn your nav lights on and you're wondering where they are, they're actually all the way up here on the bow. So that one will shine out uh, red and this one will shine out green. Um, every time you turn on the nav light, these ones will come on and the all around white light that is up on the mast will also come on. And then if you have the anchor light on, then just the all around white light by itself will come on. But we'll cover that shortly. Okay, so we've done this locker and then now we can move to the next locker down here. So we just take these snaps off nice and gently. We'll move that to the side and then we'll open up this locker and there are some goodies in here to talk about. So jump, jump in and we'll have a look. Okay, so obviously there's a feature here to discuss being storage, which is great. So another place to store things on the boat. It's always good to know where all the uh, storage is because storage on a boat is something that's always at a premium. So up here is another location. Looking down inside, what we can see is we have this little access plate here. This really doesn't go to anything that's user uh, serviceable. Um, it's really just the underside of this diesel fill. So really just technical use um, if you had to service that area for some reason, but you shouldn't need to go in there. Off to, to, its, to this thing's left, I guess, um, uh, we have this switch here. So this is like a main disconnect switch for the windlass. So if you turn the, the windlass battery on, and then you go up and press that button we discussed and it still doesn't turn on. This may be in the off position. So if you put that up, then you are good to go. Okay, but down is in the off position. All right, so there's a lot of other goodies in here. They're up forward. Let's see if we can get this camera in there and have a look at them. Okay, so from right to left, we have that battery switch. So directly below us down here is actually that uh, bow thruster and windlass battery that we spoke about earlier. This is the main disconnect to turn it off and on. So when we use that rocker switch inside, this thing actually spins automatically. So you'll see that it'll spin this way and that way as we give it a command with that rocker switch from the inside. And maybe we uh, can splice in some footage of these things like turning by itself. But it doesn't stop there with this switch. You can actually lock it in the off position manually like that. And then you can go one further and completely lock it out and even remove it. So no one can actually get to that battery. So there's actually four different modes here. So we have all the way off and locked, so not even rocking the switch will turn it on with even removing it. And then we have the, let's call this off automatic. So it's off, but it can be like uh, remotely controlled. And then it will spin all the way. Like if we press on, it'll spin like this. And then that light should flash to indicate that it's on. Okay, so there we go. That light means it's connected to the battery. And then you actually have a locked on mode as well. So once you move to this mode, and notice I'm pressing in as I'm spinning. That's important so you don't rip the, uh, the gears of that little motor apart as well. So this is locked to the on position. So if I tried to use that rocker switch inside, there's no way to turn this off remotely. It's just completely locked on. So they are the, all, all the different modes uh, for this battery switch. And that is true for every battery switch that looks like this. Uh, they have all those modes available to them. Okay, next one along is the galvanic isolator. So this one here basically keeps you um, separated uh, galvanically um, from the shore. You should probably Google that if you're not exactly sure what this thing is. We won't get too deep into the details, but there's a little bit of a wiring diagram on the front here. It basically um, keeps you safe from electrical shock drowning and things like that. So everyone should really have one of these. Um, you'll notice underneath that, <coughs> excuse me, uh, we have a, uh, the main inline fuse. So this one here um, is connected directly between the battery and the switch right there. And then moving right along, we have this breaker box. Moving right along, we have this AC switch panel here. Open it up and you'll see 120 is indicating the voltage. So there's 120 volts coming in from shore power. That's how we know that we are good and connected. And then you see there's a row of AC breakers here. And they're pretty clearly labeled what they are. So uh, the first one is the charger, and then there's receptacles, and then the next one is main. And then uh, you'll have a reverse polarity light as well. And uh, yeah, and then there's an, an RCD, which is what's called a, it's, it's like a GFCI, it's a residual current device if there's a difference between um, uh, neutral um, and ground, I believe, it'll, 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 it'll capture that. Um, and actually 
uh, a trip disc brake in here, so it means the electricity is going somewhere it shouldn't, essentially, like a GFCI, it'll, it'll, it'll interrupt it. Anyway, um, closing here, it's quite a good press and it's actually quite a good pull to get it open, so don't be alarmed if it's really hard to open and close, they're all like that. Okay, so off to the left of that, you just have some fuses. Uh, that's pretty rare that one of these are actually going to blow, but there are fuses located here. And then moving around a little bit more, this way, yeah, you just see that in there. So that's your battery charger in there, okay? So this is basically uh, in charge of uh, charging all your battery systems. So uh, it's taking the AC power from the shore, and then it's converting that into DC direct current, and then putting that into things like the, you know, the bow thrust battery, service bank battery, uh, and... Um, uh, engine start batteries and things of that nature. Okay, so that is about all there is to talk about in this particular locker. Let's keep moving. Okay, so moving just outside the locker, we have this diesel fill port. So like all the other filling ports, you just pull this thing up and then anti-clockwise to open, clockwise to shut. So the reason this boat has diesel is nothing to do with the engines or the propulsion system and everything to do with the Webasto diesel heater that's on board. So that runs on diesel. Um, and it can also run on like a paraffin wax mixture as well. Maybe we'll talk about that later. But diesel is what most people put in there and that's probably what you're going to put in there because it's just so much easier to get your hands on. Over here we have the shore power cord. You'll note this little red indicator light. Whether this is plugged in or not, that indicator light will indicate whether or not it's plugged in and has power at the dock. So we'll show you how that plugs in later. But um, what we want to do is we want to always use these collars if we have them. So you got three prongs, which is indicating to us that this is a typical North American 30 amp, 120 or 125 volts plug. So we put this in, we align the pins, in it goes, and then we give it a slight turn to clockwise. And while holding this clockwise pressure, we get this locking collar on. And then we give that a bit of a spin until this is nice and tight. And then that should be a nice solid electrical connection inside of there, okay? All right, so that's those. I'll close this one up and we'll move to the next locker. Okay, so the next locker along is under here. So we've already released this cushion snaps and we'll move this out of the way. And then we have the standard issue clasps here. Notice what I'm doing with that. I'm pulling it up and giving it a twist and you'll see why because of this thing here. Okay, we have some life jackets and some extra covers stored in here. Once again, I'm going to remove these off camera and then we're going to jump in there and talk about what else is in there. Okay, so we have these uh, life jackets out of there and you're going to notice that you're probably going to have some of these on board somewhere. These are simply just fender covers. We choose to leave them off and the, uh, the lucky new owner can put these on at their, uh, at their discretion. Okay, so I'll put those aside for now. And then inside of here we have the table and the table legs that actually go in to make this bed area or the table area. So they're going to come in this handy dandy carry bag. So you grab this and you pull this out. And then this is the table itself which will also drop down. And it will be depending, it will be set up depending on which set of legs you choose to put in there. So the first thing we'll do is set it up in table mode which is going to be using the two long legs, okay? So we'll grab this leg here and this leg here and we're going to set these up on the deck and we're going to have a lunchtime table mode so we can sit and have lunch and then we'll show you the bed mode after that. Before I shut this scene down, let's talk about these little things underneath here. So you'll see um, what they look like. They slot into these little bits here and or these little uh, deck fittings, should I say? and they go in the deck and then we just twist, twist, twist and they should lock tight. I'll show you that just now. Okay, so these are those two table legs and they are loose right now, so I haven't actually put them in. I, I spoke about those a little bit earlier, those fittings, so you'll see how they align like that and then you twist, twist, twist until they get tight and then you can't pull it out after that, it's locked in. So you turn it until it's snug. I, I wanna show you something really quickly um, which can be, be a little bit of a problem. If you find yourself spinning, 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 and it's just not attaching, what you may have done is done that. If you've got this little nub all the way down flush, then we need to back it out again, and then start again. So we put that nub back in the hole until they align, and then twist, oh, whoops, twist. And then we're gonna see we have that clearance back again. And then this time, we're gonna push it down, make sure it's nice and deep. 
you twisting. Nope, let's try that one again. I didn't quite leave enough clearance. There we go, that's better. Okay, then that's done. So basically what's happening there is once that thing slides inside the hole, it needs to be able to, be able to twist sideways, right? So that gap needs to be bigger than the thickness of that plate that we're dropping it into, which now they are. Okay, so the next step will be placing the table right on top. Back in just a moment. Okay, so you notice there's two handles here. Use them, because they're nice and handy. You'll have these two holes on the back. You rest them right against those and just roll it on in, and it just sits nice and snug. Okay, and now we're set for lunch. So you can sit people all around the outside of here, and you can even sit here on this bolster if there's no chairs left, and you can still access the table and, and be part of the action. Okay, so that's how that works. I'm now I'm going to remove this, I'm going to take the long legs out and I'm going to put the short legs in and we'll show you bed lounge mode. Okay, so here's the tabletop and we're going to slide it into the position. Oops. In fact, that technique isn't going to work as well because this is in the way. So let's just try and line it up from the top. Okay, so now that's in place. There is another feature here. One, two, three, four cut cutouts. Also designed to go around these four handle spots right here. And then we open this thing up and place it in place, just like that. So that's pretty secure. I'll grab that cushion, uh, which I believe is just behind you, just a minute. And then you can put the clips back in, but this is the lounging area. Don't underestimate the importance, uh, the importance of lounging around on your boat. You bought a boat after all, so lounging is very important. And this area is awesome to do that in. There are some other features here, which is not on this boat, but there is a sunshade option available. This vessel isn't actually equipped with that, but the ones that do, there'll be little clips up here on the brow of the hardtop, which is just behind where the camera is right now. And a big sunshade will come out here. And then there'll be these holes in the gunnel side with poles that go in there and then it'll all clip up and it'll make this uh, beautiful sun shade area and you can lounge in here, read a book, chill out, just watch uh, the world go by. Okay, I'll pack all this away and then we'll move to the next thing. And what's under the floor I hear you say? Well, I'm glad you asked. There is lots of stuff under here to talk about under this hatch right here where the table is set up. Under my foot here, you'll have a key inside one of the locks, okay, or one of these mechanisms. Not many of these have um, keys in them, but this is one of them. You'll find a really, really tiny little key with your key set, and that's what this is for, is this lock up here. So much like the others, we lift and we spin. There is a diesel tank in here I'm going to talk about, and just for reference, the diesel fill is under here, if you remember. So when you fill uh, your diesel for your Basto heater, it goes down that, and then into the first item under here. Okay, so that stainless steel tank up there is a 20 litre diesel tank. Moving directly after that is a power steering pump. So that is for the Mercury engines. They, they have this power steering pump. Uh, so it's nice smooth steering from port to starboard. Directly behind that is something very important and that's your bow thruster. So that battery we talked about earlier, that's directly connected to this bow thruster as well. And then also next to that, hanging on the hull, um, there'll be what's called a an automatic charging relay. So it's right down in the bottom of the screen, kind of down there. It's hard to see. Yeah, it's got the it's got the big electrical cables hooked to it, just over there. Um, anyway, so that one there is basically what hooks up your um, your bow thruster battery to the rest of your batteries. So when the rest of your batteries are in a state of charge, that box over there automatically closes and then it will charge the rest of your, or charge your bow thruster along with the rest of your batteries. That's what that is for. Okay, so moving just behind that, this thing with all these big pipes coming out of it, this guy right here, this is actually your holding tank. So when you use the bathroom, uh, this is where all the waste water goes and uh, it can be ejected two different ways. One is uh, with a pump out, uh, from the deck level, usually done by a, a marina uh, that has the facility to do that. They'll stick a hose into the deck and I'll show you where that uh, is located. And the second way is by doing overboard discharge with a macerator pump. Also something we'll cover as we move through the boat. 
Okay, so I'm going to close this hatch and then we're going to move into the next section, which is the head. Okay? Okay, so you'll notice there's a big door here, a little sight glass uh, as well. So you open this up and you'll see that there's a head compartment inside. This is another lockable uh, latch actually, so much magnet over on this side. So if I let that go, that's now magnetically attached. It is pretty strong, but not really strong. It's as strong as it needs to be when the boat's in fairly calm waters, but it won't hold in heavy seas, so don't leave this in the open position for too long. Okay, so I'm gonna jump down inside of there, and I'm gonna start pointing things out uh, so we can get familiar with them inside the cabin. Okay, so here we are inside the head compartment. As you can see, it's fairly spacious uh, for this size boat. I can sit in here no problem, and I have a sink to my right, and I have some storage here to my left. Immediately above me, I just want to draw attention to this little knob here. So, up above, there is actually um, this piece of hardware up here. Oops, sorry. So if we spin this in the anti-clockwise direction, you'll see it actually opens up. This is just a fresh air vent to down below. And there is a little knob I can spin it from on the inside as well. So you can have uh, fresh air in and out of here. The default for these should be closed um, because it's not, what should I say, it is easy to get water in here. Um, if someone was washing the boat or something like that, if they directly spray it. But if it's in the closed position, all the way locked down, all the way clockwise, then it is fully sealed. Okay? All right, so uh, let's do a big sweep around and uh, talk about everything that's in here. Okay, so moving around the cabin, let's take a quick look around, okay? So over here, we have the main DC breaker panel. These are what's called uh, a, uh, a pop-out fuse. So it's a, a fusible link in a circuit that will pop out if it is overloaded. Generally, if there's a problem, it'll pop out. Um, if you're lucky, you can push it back in and keep going about your day. If it keeps popping out, then that piece of equipment with the label that's corresponding to the pop-out breaker will need to be inspected by a professional, and uh, you'll need to find out why it is indeed uh, throwing the breaker. Okay, however, Outside of those pop-out breakers, there are a few user interactable things down below. So the first thing is simply just a 12 volt plug. So if you lift up this little flap, you can get uh, any standard uh, 12 volt uh, receptacle plug for that one and you know do what you need to do down there. To, it, to the left of that, there is a fresh water pump um, button, which turns the fresh water system on. The fresh water pump is actually located in this room and I'll show you that in a minute. And then the one next to that is that macerator pump we were talking about just a little bit earlier. We're saying that there's two ways to empty your holding tank. One is to have it pumped out at a marina, and the other one is an overboard discharge using your onboard macerator pump. Um, you need to have your through hole open for that, and you also need to be in an area where you're allowed to pump out. So make sure you do your due diligence and really find out if you're meant to be pumping out where you are, like if you're allowed to do that, okay? So that little momentary switch, you press it and it'll and it'll pump out okay all right so um, moving along we have some coat hooks up here we have two lights up here in the ceiling these two lights are controlled by this switch just over here and this thing over here is a carbon monoxide detector so this one this particular one is hardwired to the vessel's service battery so this thing will go off in two different scenarios. One will be that it's carbon monoxide. Um, so if it's going off, you should pay attention to it uh, and get some fresh air. And the second scenario in which it will go off, which is what we see the most actually, is if you have a low battery situation, it will alert you by beeping, right? So um, as I said, it's connected directly to your service battery. So if you have a low or flat service bank, these have been known to go off and cause a bit of a nuisance. So another reason not to let your service batteries go down, um, but uh, this is connected to that. So a little uh, hot tech tip there. Here is your faucet. As you can see, pretty simple. And over here to my left is a little switch. I don't know if it's uh, easy for you guys to come around and have a little bit of a look at that. So as you can see, there are two different modes here. So the, the one on the left, so I rock and hold it here for add water. 
You can hear the pump running and the toilet bowl that I'm sitting on right now is filling up full of water. So all that does is just add water to the bowl. For that to work, you, you do need to have your, uh, your fresh water pump on, which is uh, switched by over here, okay? And then the next one is called pump out. So after you've filled the bowl, you can pump it out, um, which isn't going overboard. When it says pump out, it just means pump out into the holding tank. So there's definitely another step to pump out, like quote unquote pump out. This just pumps it from your toilet to your holding tank and that's it, okay? And that's what that sounds like. Okay, so off to my right here, um, it might be worth taking a look inside. If you have a look, you'll see there's some things written down here. One says toilet inlet shutoff valve. The other one says waste tank shutoff valve and sink drain shutoff valve. All these labels are here because this panel is removable. It is a tech space. It isn't pretty. It isn't supposed to be pretty. It's just somewhere where technical equipment is located. So we open this up. Pop that aside. And inside of here, there's quite a few different things. Okay. All right. So we spoke about the water pump before. So you'll see it's ready to go. It's just flashing away there. They're very, very good pumps, actually, very robust. Uh, they, they last a very long time. We have very little issues with them. Okay, so just on this side of the pump right here, you'll see that there's this screen. That is something that is a maintenance item. Uh, periodically check in on that just to see what it looks like. It's clear for a reason. That's so you can inspect it visually. There's a small screen in there which is designed to pick up foreign debris so it doesn't get into the pump body and break the pump. So this line on this side is the feed side or the suction side of the pump. And so it's got to go from the water tank into here and then into the pump and then from the pump to the rest of the system. That little thing flashing is actually a uh, pressure uh, sensor. So that's the thing that tells the pump to turn on and off depending on what the pressure is on the system. So I'm going to turn a tap on and then you'll see how it responds to me doing that. So every time you turn a, t a, a tap on, uh, that is what's happening down here. That blue light is basically indicating that it's uh, detected a drop in pressure and that turns the pump on. When you close the valve, the pressure rises, the switch turns off and the pump stops running, okay? So any number of things can cause problems here. Um, if you have water pump cycling or no water pressure or things of that nature, um, but uh, this is where the pump is if you want to do some of your own DIY diagnostics. Now there's something else here I really want everyone to know about and this is the screw here. We've talked about it before in other videos. Okay, so this here is what's called the bleed screw. If you've ever run your, your tank dry, completely empty, and you go to turn a tap on and nothing comes out, then what you may need to do is you may need to introduce water into here by opening this bleed screw. So you turn the pump off at the switch in here inside like uh, on the breaker panel and then you crack this bleed screw and then you turn the pump back on and then you wait until water starts coming out of here it'll eject air for a little while and then water will start to come out of here so to crack it you just turn it anti-clockwise I can do it by hand actually so here we go so you know what let's let's just do that I don't think I've ever done this on camera before so I've cracked it just enough it's a little wiggly a little wobbly I'll turn this here see that okay this was already primed, obviously, so it happened very quickly, but sometimes air will escape for a little while before you actually get water there. But as soon as you get water there, you can turn your tap off, close this screw back up, and then hopefully you can start opening up all the faucets in the rest of your boat and you are good to go. Okay, so you see there's a through-hole valve for this guy right here. So this through-hole um, is actually in the open position. This is directly connected to the sink, so if we follow that up there, if your sink is backing up and just will not drain, super easy, just have a look at that hose and see if that valve is shut, because it could really be that easy, okay? And um, this this is Webasto ducting in here, and then over there uh, is a discharge valve. So that valve is for the waste tank. So there is also a, a macerator pump and it discharges right there. So that's how you open and shut that. This one is in the open position. You always, always, always need to open this before you use your macerator pump. 
or else you will cause damage to your system. Uh, trust me, it isn't pretty, so always check that this is open before using your overboard discharge. Okay, so we've now left the head area. We're back out on the uh, forward deck area. And to my right on the deck level is the waste pump out. So I mentioned earlier that a marina could come and pump out your waste tank. So that is the valve that they would need to open on the deck. Always make sure it's closed when not in use. And on my left hand side is the water fill. So when you want to fill your fresh water tank with uh, potable water, then that one gets opened, it gets filled up and then closed down. Okay, so now that we've talked about those two, I think we can start moving our way off the foredeck area and through the rest of the vessel. Okay, so from the foredeck uh, there, there's nowhere else left to go but up. So here we are on top of the boat. So this here is the sunroof. This opens up from inside and we'll show you that real, uh, real soon. Here and here are two removable and customizable roof racks. So you'll see there's two screws at the base of each one of them on each side. Um, there's also two little blanks over here. So if I want to, I can actually undo this roof rack and move it over to here. And I can make the roof rack over there instead of over here. And then I can move this one up or I can move it back. I can, I basically got two options for each one of these, okay? So you'll notice the canvas is down on top of the uh, sunroof here. Simply by undoing these snaps, we can take it all the way off. So I'm going to undo all of these and then we're going to talk about this sunroof. Okay, so now we can get a really good look at what the sunroof material actually looks like underneath the protection canvas. Let's just circle back to that term, the protection canvas. Uh, whether or not they call it that in the manual, not sure, but I'm going to call it that. Uh, it is a protection canvas and it should be on here to protect this material, uh, basically at all times when the sunroof is not intended to be in use. So especially when it's raining and, and times like that, you want to have that canvas clipped in place. But if you intend to go boating, by all means take it off, stow it away, but then put it right back on at the end of the day when you're done. Uh, it's always best to put the canvas on uh, when, the, when the sunroof is not actively being used, okay? So now that I've said that little piece, um, we'll talk about this canvas. Um, this canvas here is a lot more lightweight than the, than the other protection canvas that we're talking about and it will accordion all the way up to the aft side of the boat. Uh, there is an electric switch down below. I'm going to go and press that switch and you're going to watch this thing open all the way to the open position and we'll do that from the top of the boat, okay? Okay, this is such a fantastic feature. As soon as this opens, the immediate drop in temperature inside of this cabin as all the hot air just escapes through the roof was just, it's phenomenal. And the amount of airflow now in here, I can taste that fresh air just rolling in, like it really is such a great feature. So um, I feel that not enough people open these. I see a lot of people out on their boats and I almost never see these open, but uh, I know, um, I definitely like to drive with, uh, with this open. So yeah, don't forget about your sunroof. It's a super cool feature. Okay, so it is a one touch to close and a one touch to open. You will notice though when it closes, it'll stop about here, okay? And that is on purpose. So to close it the rest of the way, keep pressing the button. Okay. Okay, so here it is from inside. It does stop there, it's pretty normal. You just gotta press and hold. Notice it's only a momentary thing once you're past this point. I think it's a safety feature so things don't get stuck in there. It requires a human being to be looking and actively saying, keep closing. So you gotta hold your finger until it stops and then you can release and then it's fully closed. Okay, I'm finished with this now so I'm gonna grab that canvas and I'm gonna put it back on. I'll show you a little tip as well when it comes to putting the, uh, the canvas back on top of the roof. Okay, so here we are with the canvas. I pulled it down from below where I had it stowed. Notice I've done it in a nice little roll. Uh, I like to take it off in a roll, stow it, and then roll it back down. It's much easier to work with that way. But much like a, a USB plug, which can either go in this way or this way, so 50% chance of getting it right. However, everyone knows you always put it in wrong the first time every time. But with these canvases, 
uh, they aren't quite symmetrical. Um, so in this corner here, which is the arc corners, there's a snap, but it's slightly inset from the edge, right? Whereas the forward snap, it's all the way in the very, very corner. So if you do pull out your canvas and are curious if you've got it in the right orientation or not, know that the snaps on the back side, the aft side, are inset, inset a little bit from the edge, and then you know you're in the right place, okay? So I'm gonna put one snap there, and then I'm gonna roll it all the way under and snap it all back together. You will need to access the vessel from both sides, obviously. Okay, now I'll go to the other side and do the other side. Okay, canvas is back on. Couple more things over here. Let's talk about those and then we'll get back down below and keep moving through the boat. Okay, so here at the aft end of the hardtop, uh, we have the mast, which is equipped with a Halo 20 Plus radar. This is an option. They're not all gonna have that, as is the spotlight, which is above that. The controls for this are inside, and it can pan uh, and tilt, and also go into a sweep, and it has an SOS mode as well. So it'll be like dot, 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 dat, dash, 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 dot, 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 in a repeating order, if you wanna call for distress, uh, distress um, visually, okay? And then above that, which you're probably not gonna be able to see from where you are, but there's a little plate just up here. And on top of that, there's gonna be a GPS puck, right? So that's what's getting our signal down to the screens so we know where we are. And then behind that is the all round white light, okay? So um, this one here actually has a removable top if you wanna change, uh, change it out. And then let's lock that back in. Okay, so this one's used for anchoring or for when you're underway. So this white light will be on in both of those scenarios. The, the difference between steaming or being underway and anchoring is the addition or omission of the, the, the green and the red lights on up front. But anchoring, this one's on just by itself. And that is about all there is to talk about up here. Maybe with the exception of this trough that my fingers are currently in, there'll be a few locations around the outside of this hardtop that have little drain ports so there is a trough running the full perimeter of this hardtop that water will collect into, and then they'll run along those troughs and then they'll come out a couple of little holes that are around the outside. So, hot tip, be very careful if it's just rained and you step onto your boat and the boat kind of, you know, heaves under your weight a little bit. Uh, if there's a little bit of water left in these troughs, it could spurt out one of those holes and uh, give you a, an unwanted shower. So, look out for those. All right, well, let's uh, move down below and we'll continue the journey. Okay, so I think we're gonna save the cabin till last and we're gonna work on this aft deck area before we move inside. So immediately you'll, you'll notice that we are on the uh, aft cabin version. So this is what's known as a 28 cabin aft cabin. That's what it's referred to as. Underneath this canvas, we have another lounging area. We spoke about how important lounging is when you're on your boat. Uh, that's why we go boating a lot of the time. Uh, one is for adventure and the other one is to lounge around when you get to where you want to go. So uh, taking this canvas off will reveal all those cushions and we'll show you that in a minute, as well as some access to the aft cabin area. Okay, so right here we have a ski pole. Uh, there's a little warning label here about what you can and can't use it for, so have a read of that. Two engines on this model. Uh, there is a single engine uh, variant of the 28 Axopar. Uh, most of the ones we sell tend to be the twin 200s. Um, but it's a personal preference and both of those models are available. Okay, so back here we also have two lockers, starboard quarter and the port quarter. So in this starboard quarter locker, let's move over here and open this one up. So great storage in here. We put some spare fenders in there. Okay, so this one doesn't really have a hell of a lot going on other than just spare storage. Okay. And then moving on to the port locker, let's just change camera angles and then we'll talk about that one. Okay, 
So port quarter, a little bit more going on around here. This thing here, grip it and you pull it out. This is our shower. So this one is a twist to turn on. You'll see there's a, a mixer here. Um, 37 Axopars can have a hot water tank and then you would see a red and a blue mixer line. Um, all 28s are gonna be cold water only for now. So when you twist this, you'll see we've left the water pump on and that's exactly what that'll be like and then twist the shut. Okay. And then we put it back into its receptacle, just like that. You open this up, um, and this is actually for the flagpole. So we'll pull that out in a minute and we'll set that one up. There's this little guy here. There's one of these on each side. I've never really fully understood what these are for. If someone knows for sure, please drop it in the comment below. We'd love to uh, get your take on that. What I think they are for is, I think they're for lashing things down on top of this zone. That makes the most sense to me is a flip up and a, like, like a lash down D-ring. And uh, we'll go with that for now until, uh, until we hear otherwise. And here is the locker. Okay, so once again, a couple of things stored in here. We'll move these out of the way and then uh, we'll get a camera angle on inside. As promised, uh, there's a couple of goodies in here to talk about. So this thing here gets pulled off. It's basically a handle for pumping the manual bilge pump system, which is, the rest of it is located under there. This slides in like that. And then you may be able to hear that pumping air. So this essentially connects to a bilge pump that's down in the center bilge at the aft of the boat. And in the event of an emergency or loss of 12 volt power, uh, or where the bilge pumps aren't keeping up and you need manual power, that's what this is here for. Um, and that's really all there is to talk about in this locker with the exception of maybe, yes, let's talk about this thing here. You'll notice this is quite a thick uh, bulkhead here. So this uh, is optioned with a cooler essentially. So this is just like, like a wet locker. Uh, people have been known to put like ice in here. These things are waterproof. So yes, this keeps it a little cooler having this extra layer right here. Okay, we'll close this up and we'll keep moving. So we've just exposed this lounge area that we were talking about earlier. There's a head bolster right here. And then we have these. Um, there is an access area under here as well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna release the little snaps here and here. And then it will allow me to take this centerpiece completely off. It's just Velcro, okay. So you'll see that we have two panels. I'm not sure if you guys can see those from where you are. If not, come a little closer. So we have some locking dogs here, which I believe may be unlocked. Yes, okay. So notice that they were unlocked and it is up to you whether or not you lock them. Um, security says you should, but if you want an emergency way to get in, if you happen to lock your keys in your boat, <laughs> then you can leave those unlocked. So personal preference there. Okay. So you can also lock these like that. So if you twist these little bases, then it'll stay up all by itself. Okay. And that'll keep an amazing amount of airflow rolling through this cabin, which is spectacular. We love airflow. And Undo those. Okay. Okay, we're almost ready to go inside the cabin, but there's one more thing I want to show you, and that is, of course, the engines. So right now they are tilted all the way up. Uh, earlier uh, on today, I did turn the port and starboard rocker switches on for the, the engine batteries, which means I will have control over the trim on the local trim switch located on the port side of each engine cowling. So I'm gonna lean down and I'm gonna access that trim switch and I'm gonna trim them all the way down into the water. Okay, so I just press and I hold and away I go. You notice a two stage trim speeds, you have a fast and then a slower one. Okay, and then we'll do the next one. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so you'll notice that these are twisted, like slightly, you know, uh, starboard turn on them. I wouldn't recommend leaving them like that. The only reason these are stored that way is because the way that we have these located um, in the basin for display, so we have a lot of them stacked up on a bit of an angle. So to get close to the dock, we've done what we needed to do. But um, my prevailing recommendation would be to leave them in the straight position always. So center rudder, if you want to call it that, and then trim them up and down from there. I just wanted to get that out there before we go any further. Okay, so this little depression here is actually telling you that that's where you want to press to open this little flap. And inside this little flap, if you come around a little bit, there's not a lot going on in here, but there's a couple of things. Here is some important information you should definitely read. It will have a description of what a normal oil level or operational oil level should look like. And here is your dipstick. Bring it out and then you'll see those beads, okay? So if the oil is anywhere between the top and the bottom bead as far as oil level, then you are in the operating range. Above it, you're in trouble. Below it, you're in trouble. We ship these boats uh, with some top-up fluid. I did remove it off camera from the port aft locker. That's where we typically store it. Okay, um, here's the fill port should you need to top up. Depending on how much you need to top up, uh, just a little bit at a time, then check, a little bit at a time, then check. 